The murder of Tyree Nichols has led to an increased scrutiny of the city's Scorpion Unit, a special crime unit that the Memphis Police Department describes as targeting high crime areas. But Tyree is not the first person to be killed by a special crime unit here in Memphis, Tennessee. In the wake of Tyree Nichols' murder, some advocates of police reform are pointing to the use of special crime units like the one that took Tyree's life. The night Tyree was pulled over during what was supposed to be a routine traffic stop, he had no idea that the officers were members of the Scorpion Unit, a highly militarized team in Memphis. But nothing is routine to the Scorpion Unit. In fact, when addressing reckless drivers, they had strict orders to focus on seizing cars rather than writing tickets. Tyree was never going to receive a ticket that night. His vehicle was surrounded by cops with their guns drawn. He wasn't asked for his license. He wasn't asked for his registration. Instead, he was ripped from his car, tased, chased down, and fatally beaten. Footage of the events that took Tyree's life shocked the nation when they were released. But a closer look at the violent policing of the Scorpion unit reveals what happened to Tyree is something the people of Memphis know all too well. We spoke to several people in Memphis who could attest to the brutality of the city's police and its specialized units. Tyree was the fourth person killed by MPD since November. Yes. The other three were shot. They won't give us body camera, but they make the same excuses and the same reasons for shooting them each time, which is they'll say that they shot at them first. We never have any evidence of that. We never know that that's actually what happened. We don't get along cops at all. Not even at We see you in the store, we walking right back out. We see you in the grocery store, we walking right back out. We don't even want to breathe the same air as cops. Just because of this situation right here. Why would we want to breathe the same air like that? You might get mad. He probably have a bad day. He probably be trigger happy or something. Bah! Just like that. He probably can get away. Just like they did. They just burned it out, right? My name Take is Nalia Stewart. Street. I'm the first cousin of Darius Stewart who was shot and murdered by MPD officer Connor Schilling. He was not arrested. He works for the South Haven Police Department now. He had three DUIs and he had complaints of a sex force. They did not arrest him. They didn't, they didn't do anything to him. And I feel this family pain because my family went through it in 2015. In 2021, when C.J. Davis became the first black female police chief in Memphis, she gave the community the impression that she would have a tougher response to police misconduct. But mere months later, she adopted an approach of, quote, being tough on tough people. When she announced the creation of the Scorpion Unit, a nefarious acronym for street crimes operation to restore peace in our neighborhoods. At the direction of Davis, some 40 officers that comprise this unit employ tactics where they treat petty, low-level offenses with high-level aggression. Maurice Chalmers Stokes, a 19-year-old from Memphis, recently told his story to a local reporter about a time when he was followed by unmarked cars driven by men wearing ski masks. He says, they hopped out and bum-rushed me. They were like, let me check your backpack and don't try to run, Maurice recalled. He said out of fear he ran for his life and that he initially had no idea he was being chased by cops because of the unmarked cars that they were driving. He said, when an officer grabbed me by my backpack, he pushed me up against the gate and cut my head up. He says when one of them threw me over, he acted like he was going to punch me. Maurice said he was never told why the police were chasing him in the first place, and that when he complained about his head injury, he was ignored, despite the police report saying he refused medical attention. Three of those officers that attacked Maurice were involved in the beating of Tyree Nichols. Other units in Memphis, like the MGU, Multi-Gang Unit, or OCU, Organized Crime Unit, have a similar history of violence. We spoke to Martavius Banks, a man who was shot 14 times by one of those specialized units during yet another traffic stop. Well, they had said they ran my tag and it came back that I didn't have insurance. But actually, they knew me by my faith, because really we were going like past each other. He was at a stop sign, I was at one at a four-way, you know. He probably been went first, so he would take so long to go. So I went on and went. I already know what was going on, what he was on. So he busted a U-turn and got behind me. First I ran in the car, and then when I couldn't get away in the car no more, I hopped out on feet. And as I was running in the house, they would shoot me up the whole time. It was running in the house, they never stopped. Even when I was on the ground, they kept shooting. Even now I up inside the house. And you got shot 14 times? 14 times. Um, they shot you with an AR-15. AR yeah, I can show you the wound. Can you see some of that? Yeah. Take your shirt off, make it blood. Yeah. This what you left with? Yeah, uh, I had a trade in my throat. Couldn't even talk at the time. You know, I had all that. Really still in my back. Yeah, right here. There's a bullet, that's bullet. a bullet. Yeah, a bullet still in the back. All right here. Barely got an arm left, but it's there, you know. Yeah, he died up in there. 
know what I'm saying, right here. That's why I wore these shorts, so I can you know, show you how they right here. Yeah, he it all up in there. Uh-huh. Oh, let me leave. Were any police officers ever charged for what they They're did? They still out working right now. They we can be in the grocery store shopping and, and bump here with them, you know. Artavius Banks received a $200,000 settlement after an investigation found that the officer who shot him turned off his body camera before firing his weapon. The creation of the Scorpion unit didn't come to C.J. Davis on a whim. In fact, in Atlanta, where Davis began her police career, she was in charge of at least 11 similar special units, including one called Red Dog, which stood for Run Every Drug Dealer Out of Georgia. When Red Dog was founded in the 80s, it didn't take long for it to collect numerous complaints of excessive force and police brutality against it. As the operations of Red Dog continued, the unit became widely despised by the residents of Atlanta. The final straw for Red Dog was when officers violently raided a popular gay bar in 2009. Those inside during the raid were beaten and forced to lay on the ground for more than an hour while officers swore and used racist and homophobic slurs towards them. The raid prompted protests and culminated in a federal lawsuit where the city of Atlanta had to pay more than $1 million to plaintiffs. Davis oversaw this unit for two years before she was fired from the Atlanta Police Department after failing to investigate the husband of a fellow officer who was accused of sexually exploiting underage girls. The husband of this fellow officer would later be indicted by a grand jury after he pled to one count of child pornography. The extreme violence of specialized crime units isn't unique to Memphis. Units like these exist across the country. Many are connected by their aggressive tactics and some share a history of scandal. In Baltimore, the Gun Trace Task Force became known for its unchecked violence and corruption and would eventually see eight of its nine officers indicted on charges ranging from racketeering and robbery to extortion and overtime fraud. It's said that members of this task force pocketed hundreds of thousands of dollars while searching cars and homes in Baltimore. The police would allegedly drive fast at groups of people and quickly slam on the brakes, hoping to scare them and see who would take off running and therefore give pretense for a chase and search. This allegedly happened 10 to 20 times on slow nights and more than 50 on busier nights. The officers also allegedly used illegal GPS trackers to chase down targets for robbery. And during the 2015 uprising over the police killing of Freddie Gray, one officer allegedly stopped eluding at a pharmacy, only to take the stolen drugs himself, give them to a drug dealer, and split the proceeds. Then there's DC's Gun Recovery Unit, a nine-member team which residents of the nation's capital called the Jump Out Boys. A dubious tactic employed by GRU is jumping out on groups of people and fishing for statistics, the veteran wrote. Members of GRU would drive to an area where multiple people were hanging out, jump out of the truck, and force everyone present to submit to stop and frisk without any articulable reason for being stopped and frisked other than their mere presence at the scene. It's also believed that higher-ups in the department tried to manipulate the results in order to avoid accusations of racial bias. It would even go so far as to make stops in parts of D.C. with white residents to, quote, balance the number of pedestrian stops against black individuals in their district. These are just a few instances that reflect a much larger pattern of militarization of police throughout the U.S. The structural realities of police terror in the United States were fully on display in the murder of Tyree Nichols, exactly why his death has once again elicited calls for the end of the special forces-style police units across the country.